Federal law makes it illegal for non-citizens to vote in statewide or national elections. Those who do risk imprisonment or deportation. Nevertheless, House Republicans are pushing legislation to make non-citizen voting illegal. The proposal would require states to obtain proof of citizenship as part of the voter registration process. Democrats have called the bill a non-starter, with Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona describing it as a, quote, solution looking for a problem. But Speaker Mike Johnson has made the issue difficult to ignore by attaching it to a part of a government funding bill ahead of an October 1st deadline for funding the government. Even if banning non-citizen voting is redundant policy, Johnson sees a political benefit in forcing Democrats to vote against an immigration bill ahead of the election. Republicans control 220 seats in the House compared to Democrats who control 211. The Cook Political Report considers 24 upcoming House races to be toss-ups, which will determine if Republicans can expand their majority or if Democrats will reclaim control of the House. Lawmakers ultimately expect some kind of a funding bill will pass before the government shuts down. They have the rest of the month to work out the details. A vote on the Republican proposal to ban non-citizen voting could happen next week. To help us set the record straight, let's bring in CBS News Immigration and Politics reporter Camilla Montoya Galvez. Camilla, on the question of non-citizen voting, is there any evidence that this is happening? Uh, and why are Republicans trying to ban something that's already illegal? Hi, John. No, there is no evidence to suggest that immigrants, whether they're here illegally or legally, are voting in federal elections in any significant numbers, and certainly not enough to alter the outcome of any major election here in the U.S. As you underscored, voting in a federal election as a non-citizen immigrant is already a felony under U.S. law, and that has been the case since the 1990s. That applies to immigrants living here illegally after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border or overstaying a visa, but it also applies to legal immigrants, including permanent residents who are not allowed to vote in federal elections. And in addition to facing jail time, they can be deported back to their country of birth. So these fines, these laws are already in place, and these attempts by immigrants to vote in federal elections are rare, according to most studies. And when they do happen, they are investigated and prosecuted by federal authorities, including the Justice Department. But Republican lawmakers, John, have tried to tie the issue of election integrity, which is obviously something that former President Donald Trump tends to focus on in many campaign rallies, with the issue of the U.S.-Mexico border, another major pillar of his campaign, and concerns around the increase in illegal crossings there. And yes, obviously, as you know, border crossings have soared to record levels under the Biden administration. And so the theory, at least on the Republican side, is because illegal immigration has increased dramatically, John, that increases the opportunities or at least chances for non-citizens, including those crossing the border, to exploit our election system. But again, there's no evidence to suggest that that is happening. And again, the act of voting in a federal election as a non-citizen is a crime, but this proposal by House Republicans would make it an explicit requirement to ask people to submit documentary evidence to prove that you are a U.S. citizen when you are registering to vote. But critics, of course, argue, John, that this is solving a problem that doesn't necessarily exist and that it's merely a political ploy to really make it uncomfortable for Democrats to vote on an immigration legislation ahead of an election and also really to build the foundation to challenge the outcome of an right. election in November. Let me ask you about the southern border. Um, what has the pace of migrant crossings looked like as we near the end of the summer here? Well, John, after soaring to record levels last year and in 2022, illegal crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border dropped to a four-year low this summer. And that is because of that executive action by President Biden that has severely restricted asylum because of sweltering temperatures along the southern U.S. and because of the Mexican government's actions to stop migrants before they get to the U.S. in the first place. The number of border crossings dropped to a four-year low, the lowest in September of 2020 in July. The numbers did increase slightly in August, John, according to our internal government data that we obtained here at CBS News, but just slightly. And it does seem like the post-executive order drop has largely materialized and the numbers have plateaued. So the open question now, John, is whether the number of people crossing the border and traveling throughout Latin America to get here increases in the fall 
which historically has been the case. And if, let's imagine they keep going down, you mentioned plateauing, but if they kept going down or are they um, close to the limit that the Biden administration um, set for deactivating that asylum policy. Is that even a question yet, or is that yet to, is that not really uh, a part of the conversation? Well, right now, the current regulations say that if the daily average of illegal border crossing stays at 1,500 for seven consecutive days, John, officials can lift this executive order that restricts asylum, but that has not occurred yet. In fact, the daily average right now stands at around 1,800 and 1,900, so we are still a bit far from that. And again, historically, because of the weather changes and the smuggling tactics in the fall, migration typically increases in September, October, and November. So we could see an increase. And additionally, we have reported, too, that the Biden administration is considering amending those regulations to make it even harder to discontinue this policy, which they believe yeah. is leading to more control of the border and is deterring people. So they are actually planning right now, John, to amend it by saying that the requirement to lift it would be for that 1,500 number to be in place for 28 days, not just uh, a week. Camila Montoya-Galvez, thank you so much, Camila.